everyone. Welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use state flow and shared flow from different code in builders. Mainly launch and launch when variants like launch when started, created or resumed. Well, in my previous video I've talked about what is state flow and shared flow and especially how you can get started with it. This video is mainly focused on what happens when you use it from different code in builders. So for a recap, uh, I have this main activity inside this I have state flow, shared flow and here I am starting this state flow network call which is nothing but a dummy call which is running a while loop for infinite time and after a delay of one second I am just reading the current time in millis. Also this is for shared flow which is starting a timer and that timer is again which runs from 0 to 1000 with a delay of one second just emit the value. So here is the place where I am collecting the values from state flow and this is the place where I am just fetching the value no real time kind of subscriber just fetch the value and leave it and this is the place for the shared flow where it is collecting the value from the shared flow. So let's start with the state flow first and then we'll also jump to shared flow. So let me run this application and let me also show the log cat. So here as you could see the values are getting updated on the UI. Uh, that is all because of this collect terminal operator. So what do this collect does is that when you use collect and when the value of the state flow changes, it gets triggered and gives the value. So you can think this as a subscriber and the emitter is at some other place. So as soon as the emitter emits the result, the subscriber gets the value. Also, the second value which got stuck at 30, that's all because initially whatever value which mutable state flow was having, it's showing that value. So one thing with mutable state flow is that you have to provide the default value to it and because before the value got changed we have called this method.value so it has printed that default value. Now when I tap on this it will fetch the updated value and it will update the UI and here you can see that. So dot value is useful for all those places where you want to update the UI and then just leave it. So no subscriber attached to this. Now let's see what's going on in the log cat. So here you could see that we are collecting from the main activity. Now let me switch to another activity. So as I click on next, here in the log cat you could see the second activity begins. And the values are getting updated for the second activity. If you could see the code base for this then that's again exactly the same thing. We have the subscribers, here it's getting started and here we are again using collect or the value method. So that was about the launch when started. Now what happens when I call launch? So what I'm going to do here is that for this state flow I'm going to switch from launch when started to launch. And here value, it doesn't require anything. So let's run this application once again. So here it is. The values are getting updated once again. It's behaving in a similar fashion. No changes. However, major change will come when I move from this activity to another activity. So in the previous example in the locket which you might have seen, it was not the main activity or second activity just continuously coming. So here when I move to next activity when launch is used, let's see what happens. So here you could see the major difference. It's not just the second activity anymore. It's also the main activity. So the launcher, so the subscriber is active at both the places in the main activity and in the second activity. So this is something which you should really avoid doing that because as you have called launch in the previous activity 
and in the next activity as you moved on the subscriber is still active so that's going to consume the CPU and that's unnecessary wastage of battery so what happens when I hit back button so then you'll see second activity will no longer come here it's all about the main activity there so that was about the launch launch gets triggered even when you move to next activity and launch when started can suspend itself when you move to the next activity or the fragments so that was about the state flow now let's see what happens when we have shared flow so here I have the shared flow and let me rerun this application okay so here is the shared flow and for shared flow also as you could see it is giving me the value from the main activity and I'm calling it from launch when started also let me show you that I have a replay cache of 10 which means that when I move to the next activity it's going to give me the value from the replay cache as compared to the current value so let's move to the next activity and also you could see here I'm no longer getting a collect from main activity the earlier value of main activity was 35 and as I move to the next activity rather than getting 36 I'm getting 26 that's all because it has to give me value from the replay cache first and then give the current value also one of the strange behavior here is that if it is launched when started and if this is the part of an object then it's going to suspend itself so you could see the values are not getting changed anymore it got stuck at 45 so now if I move to previous activity again it will start running but before that let me show you the code in the second activity so here in the second activity I'm not calling a method to start the shared flow once again I'm just setting the subscriber the subscribe count here will go from 1 to 2 and now let me do one thing let me hit the device back button and as soon as I hit the device back button here you could see the main activity which got stopped earlier at 35 now got started at 36 so the reason why it got stuck at 35 was all because of the suspending function so coroutine has suspended itself as the activity has moved to on stop state okay so now let's see what happens when I switch from launch when started to launch so here for shared flow what I'm doing is that I'm calling launch and this time let's see do the value will stop populating itself in the next activity or will it continue let's check it out so one thing with launch is that even though you move to next screen it will still run in the background so let's check it out so we have a shared flow this time instead of launch when started we have launch and as you could see the values are getting printed for main activity and here you could see it's getting updated on the UI also so one thing with launch is that it's going to run in the background so let's check it out that will it again stop or will it continue giving the value in the next screen so here you could see the values are getting populated on the screen and we are getting the value in this main activity now let me move to next screen so here in the log cat you can see the values are getting emitted from both main activity and second activity and here it was a current value minus 10 that's all because of the replay cache is 10 which means that give the current minus 10 value first and then go on for the current value also when I hit back button you could see the current value is 45 the ongoing value will be minus 10 and the current value will be plus 10 so that was all about the shared flow and state flow when you call from launch or launch when started so one thing here is that 
it's not recommended to use launch rather it is quite recommended to use launch when started because as per the documentation it may lead to the app crash as it can run in the background however i haven't observed this behavior till now with uh, the kotlin version of 1.4.20 and the kotlin version as 1.4.1 but maybe this can change at any point of time. So if you are using launch, then be a bit cautious because as it is running in the background, and if you try to update the UI, then maybe in the subsequent version, you may see app crash. But currently, as of now, inside collect with launch, it is not making app crash. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you have liked this video, then hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel to get the latest videos on Kotlin, Android and Firebase. Thank you and stay tuned.